All right, so we're gonna start uh, the microgreens inside of this little gorilla cloning tent. Um, I got the light on right now, but for the microgreens to start, you know, they need to be in total blackout. So this will be nice to completely isolate them, even though they do have a cover on them from another tray. Uh, we've, we've found that, you know, as they start getting bigger and they push that tray up, that they do tend to leak, uh, you know, out of the sides and some light comes through. So putting them in something that has like total light deprivation will be, uh, will be really nice. And then, you know, we, uh, this also helps keep the, the heat inside. We've got some heat mats there and the light eventually, you know, we'll have that on and probably lower and closer to them once they, uh, they are ready for it. But well, we're going to go ahead and we'll get the, uh, we'll get the microgreens in. Hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. I do. And I love these little canisters, but they don't fit the whole 11 cups in there. So I do five cups of water and to a half a cup of hydrogen peroxide. And this is a 3% food grade hydrogen peroxide. You just mix that with the water to help keep. Uh, bacteria and stuff growing? Yeah, for the microgreens to help keep the bacteria, um, help keep the mold from growing, fungus. Mm. And we're using water from our well, which has the proper pH. Yeah, we grabbed it out of the, the house that goes through a filtration system and it uh, adjusts the pH up to about like seven, seven and a half or something. So grabbing it directly from one of the uh the hydrants outside uh it has a much better ph around like 5.5 which is great so uh and also it was really cold when i grabbed it last night so i brought it in and let it sit in the basement overnight so now it's about room temperature which is a lot better so one thing that you want to make sure when you're mixing any kind of chemicals and this is from the chemist in me is you want to put your water in the vessel first so i use this just a regular measuring cup with a spigot it just pours better you want to put your water in first and then your chemical whatever it may be um just so if there's any splash back it's water that's splashing back and not the actual chemical because you know while hydrogen peroxide won't necessarily kill you it, you don't want to get it on your clothes or anything like that so just general rule of thumb So what are you doing now? So I am measuring out the microgreen seeds. This is a superfood mix. Um, I found with the mixes, as opposed to like a straight single um, single type, like you need a little bit less so that they're not competing so much for the resources. So I do about 35 grams. And it's not a perfect science, you can kind of play around with it. Um, Just so you get good coverage on the, uh, the mat, right? Yeah. And you don't, you don't have any like competition for resources or things like that. So. Usually I like to just do, a, just kind of wet the bottom of the tray. You know, this is, this one is a, flat tray and then we're going to put the tray with holes on top and we just do just to kind of get it a little bit wet with our H2O2 mixture And then you've got these nice compostable uh, hemp mats, right? Yeah. These are going to be your substrate. They're a little bit messy, but 
it keeps it clean then you don't you know you, don't, you can do it you can do your microgreens pretty much anywhere because you don't have all the soil and stuff like that that you normally would hey, what, um, what were we trying with before like the first time we did it it was this it was those yeah mm -hmm. i thought we had like a different mat or something mm -hmm. okay um yeah we've we've always done it with this and then it's easy you you can cut really close when you're when you're harvesting your microgreens you can cut really close to the mat because you're not worried about getting any dirt in there and then the cleanup is really easy and you got less chance of getting any kind of like bacteria from the dirt or soil the soil that bacteria you're using. yeah so it just keeps it all a little bit more a little more sterile is always yeah. good So you just get this nice and real wet? Yep, just give it a nice good soaking. And you want to make sure you get the substrate as close to the sides as possible because you'll always have some, some seeds going down to the side. And you can kind of stretch it. Once it's wet, you can kind of stretch it so it gets all to the sides. And then we're just going to start shaking on our seeds just to... You know, the first time around, just do a thin, thin coating, and then we'll go back and like kind of fill things in with whatever's left. Another good thing about using the mat like this, um, you can move them, around, can move them around. Yeah, you can see them. Whereas, like, if it's just dirt, you can't really see, like where they are or the con you know how much concentration you have in a certain spot. Can you put more water on after that? Yep. Now just another soaking just to get all your seeds wet. And then you'll take take another full tray and put it on top and you're going to want to weigh this down because you want to have some pressure on them for the first four days so what I do I take a bag of rice just to give it some extra pressure to give it that weight yeah kind of make sure it fits in there well There we go. Perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. When you realize that you ran out of rice bags because you ate it, you can always substitute with Dr. Pepper. <laughs> 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 really, anything to give it that weight is going to be fine. So, once you've got that... It'll just help promote the, uh, the seeds to uh, throw their roots down a little, right? Yeah. It's going to help with the germination, give them that that soft warm spot to to germinate and then they'll start throwing roots so one thing you want to make sure that you do is to label everything um, make sure you have the date at least and what each you know what each type of microgreens are in there just because it's easily forgotten um, so I have my little kitty labels Oof. Those Dr. Peppers are heavy. Load these in here. Right on that heating mat. And it's a good thing that Shane drinks a lot of Dr. Pepper. So we have our weights for this one. <laughs> this one we did Asian microgreen mix. The same way, 35 grams. Um, everything the same. So I'll just label this one. And then we're ready for blackout. They're going to be pressed like this for four days. And then we're, we're going to check them every day. Um, and then if we need to uh, put some extra peroxide on each day just to keep any fungus from growing. 
So we'll take them out, spray them down, and then put them back in blackout every day for four days. And then um, after that, we'll take out the pr pressure and then we'll flip the lid over, you know, so it makes a dome. And then our sprouts will start to come up. And they'll still be in blackout when they have that dome over them, right? Yeah, yeah. they'll still be in blackout. And then once they start to come up, once they start pushing on the top of that, uh, that top dome, then we'll take, we'll take that dome out and we'll put them under the light so that they can grow. Cool. Let's get it zipped up. All right. Well Here we go. Grow, my little pretties. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty-six grams. Sounds <laughs> like more like forty, but. <laughs> Do 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 do.